Let's get some perspective on the situation in the north, especially the northeast. Dr. Onai Komo joins us now. He's a security expert. Thank you for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you very much, ma'am. Well, emergency uh, agencies are now transporting many of those internally displaced people, uh, especially in uh, the major states, Borno, Adamawa, Nassau, and so on, uh, back to their original homes. Does that mean that their original homes are safe for them to go back to? Well, I think um, the, the people on ground will have a better assessment of mm -hmm. uh, what the situation is in terms of the security and safety of the area. But based upon uh, what we have seen recently, uh, based upon uh, the pattern of attacks by Boko Haram, I think it's probably a mistaken strategy. Uh, I have warned several times uh, previously that uh, there shouldn't be this undue haste to send these people back to their homes which have not been properly secured. Uh, because we know that uh, by and large, there's still a lot of Boko Haram activity in those areas. Uh, in the Madagari local government, uh, in uh, not, that's northern Adamawa, in uh, northern Borono, like uh, uh, Kukawa local government, uh, where you have run, uh, you know, where the Air Force, the report you just gave, the Air Force investigation is ongoing. Mm. Uh, and two days after the bombing, accidental bombing, Tuesday of last week, Boko Haram actually attacked the military um, base there and uh, tried to overrun it. And uh, they were, you know, uh, they were worsted as it were, uh, in that uh, encounter after three hours of a firefight. So if they are able to sustain several hours of firefight, and we've seen the attack on the uh, University of Midiguri uh, Mosque where that professor Ali Umani was killed, um, I mean, there are too many attacks uh, right now. So I don't believe that it is pacified enough. The area has been uh, pacified adequately for these uh, IDPs to go back. Now, I know the problem. The problem is that, um, uh, you know, taking care of them in wow. these uh, camps. And, and, and there have been reports that, you know, some of the uh, items and, uh, you know, supplies have been exactly have been diverted. Well, th th those are, you know, those are things that will happen anyway, because um, the problem here is governance of IDP camps. I, I don't think we've spent enough cerebral capital on mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to properly govern IDP camps, uh, and I think that is something that the uh, Presidential Task Force on uh, or the uh, Victims Fund, whatever it is, uh, VCFI, th those are the kinds of things they are supposed to be doing. The, the I, all the groups uh, that they are being set up, even the international aid agencies, mm -hmm. you know, there should be a meeting of minds on how to properly govern these IDP camps such that these kinds of abuses don't happen, or even the other ones. Uh, 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 reports of physical attacks or sexual attacks against IDP indigents. I think the problem here is the, the government is being overwhelmed, the state government in this case, like Borno State government, is being overwhelmed by the huge number of persons in IDP camps. They want to discharge them and go home, but their homes are not safe enough. And so you are, you know, kind of sending them back for slaughter, unfortunately. Oh, but isn't there supposed to be a process, you know, to doing this? If you, even, if, even if you have to send them home or if you have to send them to somewhere considered safer. Uh, isn't there supposed to be a process to do this? Or there, there should be some guarantees. Uh, in fact, most of the IDP say they don't want to go home, that uh, you know, their homes are not safe. And besides, some say, what are we going back home for? Now, one thing I have warned against some time ago was what we call HBIEDs or even uh, discarded IEDs. HBIEDs are home-born IEDs. Okay. When terrorists uh, have occupied a place like Boko Haram did in Northeast, when they leave, they mine the place. It's like what we are saying in Mosul, yeah. uh, in Iraq right now. Mm -hmm. They mine homes uh, or they put bombs in homes so that when you go in there, you open up, they detonate and kill you uh, that's trying to get in there. And you need to have the military and uh, the EOD, police EOD department, go in there and render these homes safe. Now, most of the homes have been destroyed anyway, so there are no homes for them to go back to. So before you say go home, you really ought to have something. You have to have some kind of a seed on ground. You mm -hmm. have to build some kind of sheltering Mm. there for them and ensure that there's adequate security on ground mm. in those places to protect them mm. because if not you're just opening them for um mm. you know unfortunate I, I, circumstances. I, I, I hear you clearly dr Ekom. it sounds like you're saying that there has to be another community set up for these people in order for them to go back but i'd like to go back to something you said earlier which was the uh ran bombing yes. uh, let's talk a bit about that so the possibility that the military could have mistakenly bombed a community how possible is that? 
Well, I, I think uh, there are two um, there are two versions right now. What the um, on ground commander said was that uh, there appeared to have been some insurgent activity in the area, and bomb strikes were called out in that area, which is okay. But I think perhaps the bombs landed in the wrong place and took out uh, innocent citizens. I think uh, by the last report, I saw 236 dead now. Now, uh, but there's another version, which is that it was just a misfire on the part of uh, the uh, pilot. That is very unlikely, because um, uh, even based on the in incident I say occurred two days later, there's a lot of Boko Haram activity in the area, and uh, it appears to me that uh, there was an actual report of uh, some kind of incident activity. There was a military response, but it went wrong. Wow. I guess we'll have to leave it to the military to do their findings. They say they're in Borno State now, so uh, we'll wait for that report. Thank you so much, Dr. Ekomo, once Thank again you, for joining us on the News at 10.